First on CBS this morning, we are hearing from women interviewed for a new documentary who claim that music mogul Russell Simmons violently assaulted them. Now, he has denied these allegations vigorously. Last week, Oprah, who was an executive producer for the film, withdrew her support because of a difference in creative vision with the filmmakers. She also sent the film's producers a letter saying that she believes the women interviewed for this documentary. Michelle Miller spoke with the three of them and joins us at the table. Michelle, what did they tell you? They told us a lot. Good morning. The women we spoke with went into detail about what they allege were serious assaults. They are also speaking out after being silent for decades. We'd also like to warn our viewers some of what you were about to hear is graphic. I did not want to come forward. It was the last thing I want to do. Everyone said, don't do it. It's going to ruin your life. I felt like no matter what I said, nobody was going to hear us. I was helping him cover it up for 22 years. And I thought, well, let me see what it feels like to just let it go. Let me try. Drew Dixon, Salai Abrams, and Alexia Norton-Jones say they're all survivors of sex crimes committed by media mogul Russell Simmons. The three of you aren't describing this just as sexual assault or just as being mistreated by Russell Simmons or sexually harassed by Russell no, Simmons. No, this is penetral rape. This is violently tackled and raped. It's rape. While saying no and fighting and crying. Drew Dixon says she was working with Simmons when he allegedly attacked her in 1995. I literally worked for him. He was ordering me a car and he told me to come upstairs and pick up a demo. I thought I would be in his apartment for five total minutes. That's it. And he showed up naked wearing a condom and tackled me to his bed while I screamed and fought and said no and cried. That's rape. Salai Abrams says she occasionally dated Russell Simmons. I mean, back in the day, we would just say you hooked up. I mean, you hung out. It was Regardless, she says, that part of their relationship um, was over before Simmons allegedly raped her in 1994. He'll say, yes, we had a sexual relationship, but he cannot address the fact that I was too drunk to consent and that the next day I called him up screaming and I attempted suicide. He knew. And I told him why, that he had ruined my life and that I had nothing. Russell Simmons said all of his relationships have been consensual and in a statement to CBS this morning said, I have issued countless detailed denials of the false accusations against me. These denials have been validated by my passing nine prosecution grade lie detector tests. He also referenced changing social norms, saying, I have admitted to being a massively unconscious playboy, which today is appropriately titled womanizer. The social change from today's activism is more important to the world my daughters will inherit than any dirt from false accusations from nearly 40 years ago. I'm not trying to take anybody down. You know, I would have been taken down by this if I had said this when I was 24 years old. Their decision to speak out publicly came after a groundswell of sexual assault allegations against prominent men like Harvey Weinstein. It felt like this portal opened suddenly where women were being believed, and I wondered if that would apply to black women. Each of these women filed a police you know, report decades after the alleged crimes were committed and beyond the statute of limitations to prosecute. Russell Simmons faces no charges. Still, coming forward is complicated for his accusers. Black people have very few heroes to spare. Not many of us get to the level of success of a Russell Simmons, which is why I was so proud of him. As co-founder of Def Jam Recordings, Russell Simmons is considered a pillar of hip-hop culture, which he helped to define from its earliest days through music That's and right. fashion. Well, it's flavor. I had known Russell for many years, you know. I met him in my early 20s. Alexia Norton-Jones knew Russell Simmons before he was famous and says he raped her on their first and only date in 1991. This was a very swift attack. And what was going through my mind 
more than anything was why. It was just a why. Because I liked Russell. And I, you know, I would have just kissed him. I would have made out with him. I would have, I, I, there, he didn't have to attack me. What did he do? He raped me right up against the wall. Excuse my language. But he, that's what he did. And I had to keep this secret. A number of women have alleged similar experiences with Russell Simmons for a documentary set to premiere at the Sundance Film Festival at the end of the month. I hope that black women and girls become more visible as a result of this documentary. When Oprah Winfrey was announced as an executive producer of the documentary in December, Simmons launched a private and public campaign to question her involvement, saying on Instagram, I have never been violent or forced myself on anyone. He is a media yeah, mogul. mogul. So the backlash. He has millions of followers. I have like a thousand. And he is using all of that muscle to try to drown out our voices. Citing creative differences, Oprah Winfrey stepped away from the documentary last week and in a statement said, there is more work to be done on the film to illuminate the full scope of what the victims endured. She also bolstered her backing of the accusers by adding, I want it to be known that I unequivocally believe and support the women. It's a small black world and because everything's one degree of Russell Simmons, and nobody wants to get in the middle, nobody stands up. It's almost as if you are saying, maybe I shouldn't have stepped forward. Is it worth it to you to have had your say? I feel that it's worth it um, because it's really, it was like carrying like a malignant cancer. I'm just relieved to be done enabling him, essentially by not telling people what he did. The filmmakers of the documentary say it was always destined for the Sundance Film Festival with or without Oprah Winfrey as its executive producer. And the yet to be titled film is scheduled to premiere at Sundance on January 25th. Now that was very difficult to hear, Michelle, I have to say. And I'm glad you pointed out that that documentary was going to Sundance with or without Oprah's, uh, Oprah's, um, Oprah's name on it because I know that this was a very stressful and very difficult decision for her to take her name off because she knows that her taking her name off because as you point out, Russell has done a very public and very private campaign to convince her. She knows that the message that sends that maybe she was muzzle, muzzled. Nothing can be furthered from the case. She was very upset with, she thought that the documentary need to breathe a little more. She thought it was important that it be put in context for the times. Because, you know, these allegations were many years ago, and now we're here in 2020. Put it in context of the times as what, of what was going on there. And, and really, time. it centered, the documentary centered around Drew Dixon, that and one she, individual. Yeah. There were a few other people involved. She wanted more women exactly in right. the documentary. All exactly right. right. Michelle, thank you very much. A very powerful story.